I, I speak on behalf of the um, Cambridge Cycling Campaign. We're, we're a local voluntary body um, with over um, a thousand fee paying members, uh, completely voluntary, working to improve safety and levels of cycling in Cambridge. And firstly, we'd just like to welcome the new committee system. Um, the scrapping of the AJC last year, we think it's very impressive, <coughs> and so we, we very much wish you well in the years ahead and welcome the new system. Um, so I'm speaking to give some context to the proposals today and um, to very much welcome them and hope you all will pass them. As, as you know, Cambridge has very high levels of cycling by UK standards, and although it may be a bit of a minority activity elsewhere, here it's something that, that normal people do very regularly. Uh, millionaire businessmen, academics, cleaning staff alike all, all use their bikes, even when they own, as many do, own cars. And as Cambridge becomes ever more successful, with more people and more businesses moving here, traffic jams would be a lot worse without the levels of cycling that we have. Every person who, cy who cycles frees up space for people who, who can drive, for example from South Camps villages um, or vans making deliveries and so on. And so this government grant it effectively is actually probably the best, most effective and cheap way to improve things for drivers too. Um, it's a cheap way to free up road space. A lot more people would, would, con would consider cycling if there's dedicated space away from cars and away from pedestrians. But this space has to be more convenient and safer than the road, otherwise they'll just continue to drive and create congestion instead. This scheme's a real step change. It, it, this, this segregation that's been proposed is, is what many people have been asking for for a long time. And it very much mirrors what Boris Johnson is doing in London. And as you can see, uh, the public are very much uh, in favour too. The proposal is very different to the kind of shared use stuff that we've had before, where, where cyclists have to, have to share with pedestrians, which of course pedestrians quite rightly don't like. And it also means dedicated cycle tracks will make driving less stressful because there's fewer interactions uh, with, 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 between cars and, and, uh, and bikes. Bus, buses also benefit. The, these two roads are, are notorious for, for kind of leapfrogging between cyclists and buses as you go along. Um, and uh, bus passengers will now be able to exit onto a dedicated area that's not shared with, with cyclists as they currently do. These, these floating bus stops, um, they've been used abroad for decades and they're now used in places like Manchester, London, the South Coast and so on. They're crucial to the scheme. Um, as they're new here, there have obviously been some fears, but, but they're a tried and tested design um, that pedestrians have, have been very happy with elsewhere. However, a last minute change has been made by officers to the design to give pedestrian priority over the cycle track. Um, this is unusual and it means the design will be non-standard compared to other places. Um, it means that someone who's, who's cycling and built up momentum um, will, will effectively have to stop even if there's someone crossing uh, when, a, when a bus isn't even present. So we suggest a compromise position um, with the standard priority arrangement, but that the cycle track be ramped up a little as the pedestrians would cross um, that surface. So in summary, um, this, this scheme is a definite win-win for everyone. Um, it's, these sort of schemes are crucial if Cambridge isn't to, to grind to a halt. It's not about giving favours to cyclists, it's about giving new people the freedom to cycle. Pedestrians won't have to mix with cyclists anymore. Bus users will benefit. Huntington Road gets a streetscape uh, upgrade. And car drivers don't lose any space. Crucially, they see um, less congestion as more people cycle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just stay here a minute. Are there any questions for clarification? Members? No, thank you. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, you, you mentioned people coming from. South Downs and the uh, you know, freeing up more space for, um, for, for cars. Um, when I look at the consultation that was done, the consultation doesn't really sort of um, target the, the number of people outside the which aren't regarded as stakeholders in this or, um, or uh, major consultees. But as a council, we, we I think we regard Cambridge itself as. Uh, as something that uh, you know has a, this county responsibility as well. Uh, I, I wondered if, um, uh, if perhaps the, the more the uh, uh, consultation of uh, people outside of Cambridge had been adequately taken into account. Um, well, I, I obviously can't speak for the officers, but the one, one thing that um, is very clear is that the people in Cambridge have a lot more opportunity to cycle. Compared to obviously people who, who in many cases have, um, have no opportunity, uh, have no options but, but to drive in, 
Um, and, and one thing we've actually long proposed to the county is that they sort of model the idea of a no cycling day to see what would happen if all the current people who recycle suddenly, suddenly use their cars instead. So I mean, we're, we're quite clear that, that actually if, 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 all, if people in Cambridge can be, can be facilitated to cycle, that, that really does help people in South Cams. And if you consider what would happen if the country they didn't, uh, South Cams drivers would, would face a lot of problem difficulties. Okay, thank you, Martin. Um, <clears throat> Martin, you, you talked about your concerns about the, um, <clears throat> the changes uh, that giving priority, as far as I can see, to pedestrians. I mean, as a local member who cycles a lot, I, I very much you know, support cycling. But I also get a lot of concerns from my residents about antisocial behaviour of cyclists. And my understanding is, is that the, the adaption was trying to uh, uh, prevent that, really, and trying to ensure that pedestrians have priority, which I would have thought everyone would welcome. Um, one of the things that um, we think has caused a lot of problems over the last decade is that, that many of the county schemes have very much been about the sort of shared use, where well, on the one hand, uh, you know, the, the, the county puts a blue sign on the pavement and encourages you to cycle there, and at the same time says cyclists shouldn't be using pavement. So there's, there's been a lot of mixed messages. And I think over the last decade, that, that's led to this increase of, of antisocial cycling. What this scheme about, it, it about is, is a very different thing, and, and it's much more like what we're starting to see in London, where there's, there's proper segregation so that pedestrians get their own space, completely away from cyclists, cyclists have their own space, and motorists have their space. Um, we, we, would, we would certainly also like to see um, the uh, one modification we'd like to see to the scheme is that at the side roads, um, that the while the cycle track continues, the pedestrian pavement also ought to consider, continue. And again, that's what the sort of best practice around the country increasingly is. So, so we we think this will really reduce levels of, of antisocial cycling, and, and it will give a much clearer message to people where they should be and, and how to behave in a, in a much more sensible way. Mm. Uh, these are just questions of clarification. Sorry. Those, the debate is still yet to happen. So if there are matters for clarification, Ashley? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I can't, but if I introduce my question of clarification, I can't help but offer a view, so I'll try and keep it brief. <laughs> I mean, I am increasingly minded to look further people on the, com the compromise position that cycling companies put forward, because it, it's clearly factored into account the response that the so visually impaired or the elderly or the disabled need, need some kind of priority or some kind of recognition. Um, I just would like to ask if there are any examples of local authorities that have taken up such a position or considered it that you're aware of. Um, well, so, so what we're proposing is that, that basically the design would be the same as, as is used on the continent in London and other places, but that actually um, modifying it slightly so that as, uh, as, as you uh, at the pedestrian crossing point, the, the cycle tracks sort of raise it slightly, so, so it naturally modifies people's speed, it gives the right impression that, you know, uh, that that the people should be aware of other people at the bus stop <coughs> and that pedestrians uh, can cross on a, on a level surface. And to me, that seems a, a, a sensible compromise. It, 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 men, it maintains a sort of standard priority, but it also means that people you know, are naturally looking out for pedestrians more. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm just doing some clarification on this point. Um, I understand that the paper is just priority to pedestrians at the bus and bus stop. But what Martin is saying is not priority for pedestrians, but a raised surface. Is it? Yeah. Can it might be useful actually to bring the officer in the writing point actually, I think. Okay, we don't give it too far. So Mike, okay. if you can turn to page twelve of the report, um, you'll see a plan of, of what we're proposing. Just to clarify the situation, we are still proposing give uh, cyclists priority at floating bus stops. During the stakeholder discussions of which the Cycling Campaign are a member, we did start a discussion about whether in fact we could or should give priority to pedestrians. Um, because this is one of the issues that came up in the consultation. Um, some of the disability groups expressed concern that previously they would just walk out and get onto a bus and now they would have to cross the cycling path. Um, but as this plan shows, the cycle lane does narrow as you get to the bus stop. There is a raised section, so those two elements will slow cyclists down. It's very good forward visibility, so cyclists should see that there are pedestrians looking to cross the road. And I, I think on balance, this is still the best proposal. 
Um, we are still talking to those disability groups, trying to reassure them. But certainly this type of arrangement is the sort of thing that we would see in Holland. It's the way it has been done in London. And so it is consistent with everything else that is sort of on the ground at the moment. Yeah. Does that clarify the position, Yeah. Okay. Charlie right. first. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to just put a bit for information for you. In, in your statement, you mentioned that many more people would be cycling in had they, this works or if these works would be done on Huntington Road and Hills Road. Do you have in your, your capacity with the, the uh, cycling organisation any information that would suggest how many or a percentage or whether people are restricted by the current provisions? Um, yes, we, we often get emails from people, particularly um, mothers and children, so who feel unsafe in these. Road. I mean, effectively, what you have at the moment is just a white line on, on, on the road, and so you, you get a lot more pavement cycling. Um, in, in Cambridge, we, we have, I think, about 25 to 26% of people cycling. In places like the Netherlands, where th this kind of infrastructure is, is, is really the norm, you get 40 45%. And what that means is that you know, there's a lot, lot fewer people having you know, to drive, freeing up roadway. So it's, it's a lot of scope for, for new people for cycling, particularly people who are moving in. You know, into Cambridge, uh, who, who obviously don't have that sort of cycling culture, if you like, so it's more potential. Thank you. No, and then our people need to know we have two other speakers. Well, just a, a point of detail. Um, I recently went on a fact-finding visit to look at the cycle superhighways in London, and they have the floating bus stops there in operation <coughs> very successfully. I would just uh, be interested to know your view of what they have there in London. <coughs> It's, it's, and it's, it's something I think we should look to. So it's a partnership between the bus companies and the road users as well, in the sense that um, on riding the bus, as the bus approaches the floating bus stop, there's a, a pre-recorded message warning passengers that they're approaching a bus stop which has a cycle lane behind it, so they have to be extra careful. So that's a clear sign that you know, the bus company is taking the floating buses into account for the safety of the passengers. I was just wondering whether that would be a good way forward for us here in Cambridge for the bus companies to be involved in a very positive way. Because up until now, I think the bus companies have been quite apprehensive. Can, can, can we just take some clarification, please? We are drifting. Okay, um, we can't afford to drift from one speaker for a quarter of an hour. It's an important business to be discussed. Can we keep absolutely questions to all speakers clear, precise? Please, not get into discussion and debate with the speakers, please. Thank you. Um, yes, I think all these things are valid. My answer to stage picture are much more positive than, than they had initially responded. And um, one of the things I think is an excellent modification that the officers have made um, is that they've actually widened the, um, the if you like, the debug, the debug debarking point, I'm not sure what you call it, uh, that, that should mean there's, there's much more space. So, but yes, all these things are Thank you, Martin.